Now, in today's video, we're taking a look at the DAC case smart USB C 7 in 1 M.2 solid state drive. Boy, was that a mouthful. Well, this little guy here packs a lot of power. Not only does it allow you to store uh, up to two terabytes worth of data, images, video, but it also has a lot of connectivity as well, and it also has video out. So in today's video, we're gonna take a look at this product. This is a first look. Uh, this is actually a beta version that I've been testing out, and I wanna share with you what my experience is and how you can get one yourself. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now this enclosure can support up to two terabytes of storage. And the cool thing about this is that the storage medium is relatively small. It's actually very small. It's using solid state drives 2230 or 2242, which you're gonna see in a couple seconds when we open this guy up. It does have a touch screen that you'll be able to basically swipe and see information about what's going on in the unit itself. Micro uh, SD support, so it's gonna be able to support that. And this is the fastest micro SD type support, three times faster than traditional. 4K Ultra HD at 120 hertz, and it has 10 gigabits USB-C and USB-A. Now it does have an adjustable cooling fan, which makes this very, very useful because heat and solid state drives are not friends. They don't go together. And so you wanna make sure that this always stays cool. And in my workflow, I'll tell you this, I use these religiously. I use these type of devices on a regular basis. Matter of fact, this recording that we're doing right now is going from a from camera to a solid state drive and when I do my editing, I transfer it to one of these. Uh, and, or in this case, I've been transferring to one of these to work. So I will put on this, you know, gigabytes of storage information, and I'll be using it anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half as I'm editing videos. So you can imagine the intensity of, an, of working with 4K footage or 8K footage, and then also how hot this can get. And I can tell you, it did not get hot. The other thing I'll tell you is uh, the sound noise. I get a lot of complaints. I have other devices that you know I'll get some feedback on. I'm um, not this one because this is a solid, this one doesn't have a fan, but I have some other ones that I would use that the fan is so loud that it's distracting and you really can't uh, really use them because it just gets in the way. This one, the fan is quiet enough where it doesn't bother me as I'm doing my work and as I'm doing my editing. Uh, the other thing is that you do have the ability to set this up so that it's read only. The speed is pretty fast. Now, the speed of the drive is also going to be dependent on the solid state drive that you have inside. So there's a combination of things that are going on. But I can tell you, in my experience, this is the fastest enclosure that we have right now. It is super fast, and then it's also very small. So I can see this traveling with me um, now, and if every business trip I have or every, let's say, YouTube engagement I have, this is gonna come with. Um, I like the active cooling as well because it means that my drive is going to have longer lifespan and the fact that it's not going to overheat on me. Now, in addition to having this connected via USB-C, which by the way, I've been testing this on smartphones, tablets, and laptops, as well as desktops, you also have a 100 uh, power delivery port. So what that means is that if you are using this on, let's say on your iPad, which is you're going to see me using on my iPad, and I need to power my iPad because I've been working on it for such a long time. I can actually connect it to my uh, to power, have it connected to my iPad, charge my iPad, and still have access to the videos that I'm editing. That's the power we're talking about. Now, the other cool thing is that I can use this on my iPhone. I can use this on my Samsung Galaxy, uh, my, my tablet, my Fold, any device. Literally, I have not found yet a device that is not compatible with this. Uh, so at least in the ones that I use. So laptops, tablets, uh, Samsung tablets, I, uh, let's say Apple tablets, all of them have been working fine. And as well as the phones that I have, all of them have been able to connect. Um, in some cases, depending on the phone, I've had to provide PD power. And then in other cases, I've been able to get away with no PD power. So for example, when I connect this to my uh, iPad Pro, which you'll see, I'm not connecting it to any additional power source. The power coming from the iPad Pro is gonna be able to power this and then also allow me to access the drive. I have other devices that are not as powerful that require it to be USB-C connected, you know, so that you can power both this and your device. So those are just some of the things that, are, that I'm referring to. So let's take a closer look at this. We're gonna see uh, the menu, the interface, and I'll just be really candid when it comes to the interface. I like that it has a touch screen. I like that it has a display and you can see information about your drive. I don't really use it that much. Uh, I'm really all about data transfer, data access, keeping it cool, and then keeping my device charged. And I think a lot of you are in the same boat as I am. So let's take a closer look. Now, before taking a look at the enclosure, I just wanna show you uh, what a drive 
of this type would look like. So here we have um, a sample of what the dry would look like, and this is what you would have to um, use in order to be able to maximize the use of a device like this. So you can see that this is a really, really small drive. I have some others here. Uh, let me show you this one right here. This is, I think, what everybody is really familiar to seeing. Uh, this is a one terabyte, and you can see that this is significantly smaller, right? So that's gonna give to the portability and again, the utility of this specific uh, solution. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up so I can show you what it looks like inside. I'll go ahead and put this right here. And by the way, it does come with the, this little screwdriver and it comes with some screws that you'll be able to, again, use if you need to, to open up this drive. And here you can see, uh, here's your fan. And then you can see uh, the drive I have in here. I just took this drive. I had this in another uh, solid state enclosure. Um, and this is a one terabyte drive. This is an actual 128 gig drive. But you can see that I have it here and I have it connected and locked in. Uh, that's all there is to it, right? So there's not much else going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. And we'll put the screw back on. And then we'll take a look at all the different ports that it has. It doesn't have a lot of them, but still has the ones that matter. Now let's take a look at all the ports that you have on the enclosure. PD, which is going to give you power, and it's passed through power, right? So it's going to power the device, and it's also going to power whichever device you're connected to. You have HDMI, and then you have, again, your micro SD uh, right here that you'll be able to connect to. Uh, cooling on this side, um, you have standard uh, solid you know, SD that you can uh, connect to. And by the way, I've used a, solid, a standard one as well as I've used the kind that you can do the micro SD in as, as well. So that's been fine. Uh, you also have USB-A, and then you have your USB-C. And what I've been able to do is I've been able to connect an external drive to this uh, USB-C, and it's worked as well. So it's kind of my workflow. I have, again, some ninjas that I have connected where, that are doing the recording of the session or the, what we're recording right now. I have some ninjas that are recording uh, my overhead and my front-facing camera. And typically, I take those drives and I pass it on to this, and I use that USB-C in order to do that. And then you have your host, which is going to connect to your uh, PC. So that's what you're looking at. Now, I connected the drive to my iPad Pro. And I want to give you kind of like a sense of what my workflow is. Before we do that, I just want to give you guys a glimpse of what's going on here. It was a little blown out with the other camera. So I have another camera facing downward that should be able to help us to see what's going on here. So you could see here that we have a lot of good information being displayed. Uh, we basically have the drive that's connected. You can see that right there. Uh, the actual transfer rate, if there was one going place right now, the connectivity to each one of the uh, drives. So here we have, or in this case, uh, peripherals that could be connected to the ports. You notice that there's no signal going out to video. You have your USB-A, your micro SD, and your standard SD. Um, and then, you know, the, the uh, other connectivity that we have right here, uh, because I have no power delivery coming in but you would have that as well. So all, all this is connected. Now I'm gonna put this to the side. Now let's see how quickly I can take information from my iPad, put it on the drive, and then we'll do the reverse too. So I'm gonna to grab this file, it's not a big one, but we're gonna grab it. I'm gonna drag it over to this drive right here, which is the actual drive. I'm gonna let go and watch how fast this goes. So done, that was super fast. That was a small file though. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna grab a video file, and we're gonna grab something that is a little bit meatier. Uh, let's see what do we have here. I think we have one that is actually 1.92, uh, and it is gigabytes. So we're going to grab this one right here, and then I'm going to drag it over, and I'm going to put it in my downloads directory right here somewhere, and then just let it go. So we're going to see how quickly. There it is right there. It's coming across. Bam. So how fast that was, right? So I'm going to grab this same file, move it over the drive. Not going to put it in the same place. We're going to put it in the root so you can see how quickly, quickly it runs. So we're gonna let it go. You can see it's coming across. That was uh, 1.92 gigabytes. That is super fast. And I can actually run the file. So if I wanna run it from here too, I'm gonna to tap it. And you can see this is the file. And if I wanna scrub ahead, notice how quickly I'm scrubbing, right? This is one of my overhead shots from my camera. Very, very fast. And again, this is what I need for my video editing process is the ability to move data that fast. All right, so now the next test I'm going to go through is I'm going to drag and drop a file, and I just want you to see the display to see what's being captured on the display. So here it says 00, zero and let me sneak my hand underneath this. Sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead and grab a file on my downloads. 
Uh, and this is gonna be a 1.92 terabyte gigabyte file. So I'm gonna choose that, drag it over to the drive. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it go. So let's see what the display says. Going now, if it registers, there you see 135 megabits per second. And unfortunately guys, that was too fast because it's done. That is fast. So this is gonna be for me a game changer when it comes to using it for editing, because uh, I need speed. I need to be able to move files back and forth really quickly. And this is definitely doing it for me. Now I can't say that this is gonna be a review because this is a beta unit. So this is a first look, but this is gonna give you a sense that the product is real. The product is very real.